Hi guys, and welcome to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today I wanna take a look at UJAM plugins and virtual instruments once more. Not only because they work incredibly well with the chord track that we have since version four and the key switches we have since version five, but also the UJAM virtual instrument collections are currently on sale in this Black Friday period in the Personas shop up to 50% off. Uh, you should definitely check it out. So let's start by opening up the Studio One browser. And I want to start out with the VD Solid, which is the virtual drummer, because it really works incredibly well together with our key switch feature. So this is what it looks like. And it comes in two different ways you can use it. You can either play um, the individual sounds like that, or you can, in the upper octaves, go with a couple of different styles for verse, chorus, specials, and stop. They also give you the recommended BPM for each, which I think is very handy. So they say around 101. Of course, we could also enter any other uh, BPM that we want. Let's try that. Cool. Uh, maybe try one more. And as you can hear, this is only changing the playing style, not the actual kit that's selected that we would change right here. So the cool thing is all of these things that we're doing right here, we can actually do with key switches in Studio One, which we have since version five. So I just double click to add a new instrument part in this loop range. And now you're gonna see these uh, notes marked in red. That is the different playing styles. I could just go ahead and add, you know, one of these notes here. And then the virtual drummer would play that through until I specify something else. We can access the key switches, not just from the piano roll, but also on the automation lane. And to do that, we simply click here uh, and you see the key switch um, appearing right here with the advantage being that I can just click it and get a preview of all the names and then I can just specify what I want and um, work with command or control on a Windows PC to just insert changes wherever I wanna go into a different rhythm. And then it's really just a matter of uh, try and error. So let's see how this would sound like. This may be a little bit too wild, so uh, cut that right here. And then I wanna go into um, a fill, but before that, I wanna go uh, into verse five. So that's already a pretty good starting point. And then I can just open up the instrument. It already sounds so organic and uh, start tuning it to my liking, either by changing the entire kit, which also changes, you know, the entire vibe and all. Or I can just switch the available drum kit and mix presets. This is all about instant inspiration and gratification in a way. Super helpful, especially when you're trying to get your first ideas together very quickly. This is retro. I really like power. Crank the amount of that parallel compression. Get that thick sound. This would be the perfect kit for some uh, layering. Cool, yeah, I think that's a great starting point. So let's add a bass to that and get familiar, not just with the key switch implementation, which we've already seen here with the drummer, but also with the chord track implementation, which is just as spectacular. So we're just gonna add the VB Royal to our project right here. And it's just as easy to get started actually, especially in player mode. Instrument note is gonna give you the full access to every individual note. But with um, player mode, you immediately get the kind of phrasing that I've just shown you on the drum editor. So it's very easy and super quick to get a backing track going right away. So the way I often like to start this is by simply adding one note uh, all the way through the part. Maybe I'm gonna re-trigger this every bar or so. So we're just gonna select one bar, quantization, and then split at grid 
by mm -hmm. right clicking it and then splitting that grid. If you don't have that in your recent items, you're also going to find it under action and then split a grid right here or just assign it to any key command of your choice. And now maybe we want to give each of these a different key switch. So we want to start out with the one that we currently had or maybe the intro one would be interesting. And then it's almost like, you know, just a random selection to get a starting point going. Very cool. Now, add maybe a little bit more grid to it. Could also start sidechaining this against the uh, entire drum kit or just parts of the drum kit. Um, but maybe the entire drum kit would be fun. So just add a compressor and click here to um, make the compressor that's now on the bass, listen to the actual signal from the drum kit instead. Nice, and uh, add a couple of transpositions. It's also especially fun when you start adding the chord track to all this. So open up the chord track and then while holding down command, just draw in as many transpositions as you want. Then change the bass track right here to chord follow, preferably to chord follow bass because it's a bass. And immediately you can see all the notes shifting according to um, the chord track. Currently it's on C, so each and every note that we currently have selected is being automatically uh, changed to a note of that target chord. And what's so great about this uh, synergy that we have between Studio One's chord track and UGEM is that we also have the option inside of the UGEM plugins themselves to activate follow chords. So this will not just transpose the MIDI note, but it will also transpose the phrase and it has a very different outcome. And the great thing is that once you have this kind of beat established and you're happy with it, but you kind of want to take it into a different direction without changing what you already got, you can just exchange the entire virtual drummer, for instance, and get a wildly different outcome. So let's drag in the hype, for instance, click replace 